Hey friends! Oh no! The lights went out! It's a good thing I have you nearby, Flameon. You can help me find my matchsticks. Of course, Dr. B. I got this. Aha! Hmm? Uh -huh. There we go. Isn't this an amazing invention? With these matchsticks, we can start a fire anywhere. It's always good to have fire around. That's true. But it wasn't always this easy. Come, today I will tell you about fire and the invention of matchsticks. Zoom in! Did you know, Flameon, that fire has been a key ingredient in human evolution? Of course! Since the age of caveman, fire has helped humans stay cozy, cook delicious meals, make advanced tools and all these other amazing inventions. That's right! But it was never easy to create fire. It required a lot of time and effort to get a fire going. And even then, it depended on the winds, the rain, the right kind of stones, etc. To solve this problem, many scientists have been working on it for ages. And one of these solutions was the matchstick. The matchstick sure is revolutionary. All you gotta do is strike it against a rough paper and it catches fire. Anytime, anywhere. <laughs> yes, but even this invention has a long history behind it. One of the first examples of matchsticks comes from China in the year 577 AD. These were wooden sticks dipped in sulfur. However, they were nothing like the matchsticks of today. When the sulfur on them came in contact with a flame, it would ignite. So they always needed a flame to start. These sticks were used to spread already existing flames. And by 1270 AD, they were being sold in marketplaces as fire inch sticks. Over the next millennium, Many different chemists worked on improving this fire-making method. And the backbone of them all was a German chemist named Hennig Brandt. He discovered back in 1669 that the element called phosphorus could also burn. Yeah, but you wouldn't believe he was actually looking for a way to make the mythical philosopher's stone. <laughs> Well, using the information from Brandt, John Walker was able to introduce the world's first strike matchstick in 1826. One day, he was working in his lab, mixing some chemicals with a stick. He later noticed that a lump had formed on one end of it. He tried to remove it by rubbing it across the floor. And to his surprise, it caught fire! He then combined sulfur paste with potassium chlorate, antimony and sugar to create the first friction lights. These matchsticks were 3 inches long and came in a round can with a piece of sandpaper in it to light them. And funnily enough, even though these matches did not always light reliably and gave out a bad odor when lit, they became quite popular. Then, in the 1830s, a French chemist named Charles Saurian created the Strike Anywhere matchstick. He made these using sulfur, potash, antimony and white phosphorus. These became a huge hit as they would always light and also didn't have any odor issues. But didn't these have much bigger problems instead? They sure did. Because white phosphorus is an extremely flammable and toxic compound. People who made and carried them during production suffered severe health problems. Children also tried to eat them as they had sugar in them and tasted sweet, which led to many birth defects. This caused a huge problem 
and these matchsticks had to be banned along with the banning of white phosphorus. Well, that's a relief. So who made the actual matchsticks we know today? Well, finally in 1855, Gustav Eric Pasch was the first man to invent the safety matchstick. He changed the use of white phosphorus to red phosphorus. He also put the phosphorus onto a separate striking surface instead of the matchstick itself. These made the matchsticks more reliable, safer and better for health and the environment. And by 1858, with the help of inventor and industrialist Johann Edward Lundström, these matchsticks were mass-produced and sold across the world. Wow! Who knew these little things have such a long history to them? And now comes my favorite part! Trivia time! The hobby of collecting matchbook covers is called Philumeni. Joshua Pussey from Philadelphia patented the first book matches in 1892. He called them flexible matches. Oh, look! The lights are back! Thanks for helping me out today, Flameon. <laughs> no worries, Dr. B. Well, friends, that's it for today. Tune in next time for more fun facts. This is me zooming out. Hey kids, you liked my videos, didn't you? Before you go, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the bell so you won't miss out on my latest videos. <laughs> See you!